Hey guys, so I'm bringing you this year's memorial outfit. Um, so the memorial is on Friday. Um, it is now Sunday, almost. We're we're about thirty minutes away from it being Monday morning. Uh, <laughs> so I have a very 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 small window uh, to get this done um, because I am slammed in the salon this week. I have. No room for movement whatsoever. If anybody cancels, I welcome it. <laughs> so I have very little time to get this done. And it should have been done a long time ago because I have had these fabrics for over a year. I've had these patterns for over a year. So yeah, procrastination. Anyway, we're going to be doing two different patterns, two different garments. The first, we are going to look at the McCall's 9406. Yes, it is out of print. This pattern is from 1998. So it is a formal wear pattern. Um, we see that they've got, it shows two different variations, but it's really not that different. One just has color blocking with a stole. The other one is just a solid color. Also, the one that has the stole has this little bow at the back at the waistline. Not going to be doing that. Mm -mm, no, not going to be doing that. If we put a bow anywhere on a dress, it's going to be at the neck. Not, not down there. <laughs> but anyway, um, I attempted this pattern two or three years ago. It was with a brown faux leather fabric. And I thought that I was making it just fine. It was an easy enough pattern. All it is is just a bunch of panels. Let me see, there's no line art on the back here to show you. But it's it's a very simple pattern. It is really that it's really easy. Um there's there's not too much to, to fuss about over this pattern. But if you take a look here, you can actually see that the uh, model's back is visible in this little slit area. Well, your girl inserted the zipper on the faux leather dress from the neck all the way down. And when I went to try it on, I'm like, oh no, I must have cut it in the wrong size because it's too tight. Do you know that it's just now dawned on me like last week that that was the problem with that dress? I ended up cutting that dress up and using it for another sewing project because it was one of those things that once you puncture faux leather with your sewing needle on your machine, there ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> it's done for. So I ended up using it for another project. But now <laughs> I have the smarts to realize uh, the back is open. So there is two things we can do. Wear it with the back open or we can insert a modesty panel, which I will be doing that eventually in the future, but not for this particular project. So yes, a sliver of my back will be visible, but not really. We'll get to that in just a second. The fabric that I chose for this pattern second time around is a uh, spring pattern, spring fabric that Joann's has had out for two years. Now, I bought this when it first came out thinking that I got to buy all of it because it's so pretty, I, I'm going to lose my mind. And then I realized when I started cutting this out last year that I didn't buy enough for this dress. Now I knew that I wanted a really, really full skirt on whatever dress I was gonna make this fabric with, use this fabric for, but I didn't realize I was gonna want it long. So this pattern actually calls for, <sighs> at 45 inches, fuller and 1 8 yards, which that's really not a lot. Um, and that's if you don't have a nap on the fabric. If you do have a nap on the fabric, it's five and three eighths. So that does call for quite a bit, especially a 45 inch wide fabric. But anyway, this is the spring fabric that um, I picked up uh, last year. It is a real photo of tulips. It is very, very pretty, very, very pretty. Um, so I ended up having to go back, wait a minute, let me lie. I bought this fabric two years ago. I bought more of this fabric last year because I started cutting it out and then realized I don't have enough fabric going in the right direction. I could have done it with some in the wrong direction, some in the right direction, but let's face it. Tulips only face one way and that's up. It's up. So I had to go back and buy some more last year. I never finished cutting this bad boy out. So it's halfway cut out, halfway not cut out. 
I don't think I have the lining cut out for this one, which that makes me nervous because I know there's a lot of dress here, okay? That's all I'm saying. It just takes time cutting stuff out. Once you get past cutting out the fabric, you're fine. Sewing it is not the problem. Cutting for, at least not for me, it's not. Cutting out the fabric is the toughest part. So this is the fabric that we're going to be using for the dress. Now, uh, last year I bought the fabric for the jacket that's going to match this. Now, I don't think initially I saw this fabric with this tulip fabric, but it's in the same line. It's the spring Easter line or something like that at Joann's. I'm calling it the spring line. But um, anyway, this is the fabric. It is a real photo of basket weave. That is so awesome. You know, you guys know I love texture. So, <laughs> I'm gonna be tulips in a basket. <laughs> Let me suck it. <laughs> I just went in there while I was editing other videos, while they were configuring and all that kind of stuff. I went in there and realized I had not actually chosen a jacket pattern. So even though I've had this fabric for over a year and knew that I was going to make a jacket for this dress, I had never picked a jacket. So I just went in there and picked this. You guys have seen this before. Um, I did this pattern a few years back when I was over in the one bedroom apartment. This is the Vogue 8355. I recently repurchased the pattern because when I made it the first time, I made it in the wrong size. Now I have the right size. It took me probably two years to finally get this at a reasonable price on eBay because everybody was like retailing it at like $17 and up. And let's face it, that's a lot of money for a pattern. That's not even vintage. This pattern is from 2007. And I know that I did not buy it originally in 2007 because I wasn't sewing yet. I had just come out of high school. I was in my very first apartment. I was not concerned with sewing. Although I did try my hand at sewing back then, but I realized, nah, this, this ain't for me. <laughs> it's because I didn't have the time. I was working like two and three jobs to live on my own, which I enjoy and still enjoy to this day, but with one job. I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. It's really late at night. I always do this. Anytime I film on Sunday night, okay. Here, I'm still doing it. Okay, so we are going to be using this Vogue pattern here for the jacket. Now, there are several things that's going to be different um, with this jacket. I'm going to be eliminating the collar because on this pattern, we have a mock neck. And I just don't think that a mock neck and a standing collar is, I think it's too much. Tim Gunn said, edit, edit, edit. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to be eliminating the collar. Also, I'm going to be eliminating these two little areas above the bust. It's already in a square neckline, which I think will be perfect to frame the tulips over my chest area. So we're eliminating the collar. We're eliminating these two little pieces. I'm sorry, let me try that, see if that's better. We're eliminating these two little pieces here, and I'm also eliminating the peplum. I want the jacket to stop right at the waistline so that the dress flares out like it's supposed to. I just think that a flaring jacket and a flaring skirt, and it's a lot of fabric. It's a lot of fabric between the dress and the jacket. I want to eliminate some parts of it. So we're just going to be doing the bodice of it and the sleeves. Let me show you the line art. That might do a little better for you. So no collar, not these two little things here, no peplum. And I am going to be doing some cute action back here on the back. You will see it when you see it. Um, it ain't called basket weave for no reason. That's all I'm going to say. So, this is going to be the memorial outfit for 2019. Um, I will say, I'm going to give myself a little excuse, okay? I could have been working on this, but I have been really, really doing, um, the invitation work, getting, making sure everybody in the community is invited to the memorial course I can't invite you on this video because y'all won't see the video until after the event is over well hopefully you have a wonderful memorial night on Friday April the 19th and yeah these are the pattern and these are
other fabrics. Here is my finished Memorial 2019 outfit. Tulips in a basket. <laughs> So this is my finished tulips in a basket dress and jacket combination for this year's memorial. Um, I can definitely say that I love the look, but your girl made some rookie mistakes in here and you are not seeing this on memorial night because it's a long story and we'll get to that in a second. But um, Anyway, we'll, we'll start from the beginning. So, <laughs> my congregation um, had evening field service arranged Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I tried to participate as much as possible. Um, I moved a lot of my clients around so that I could do evening witnessing as many evenings a week as possible during the month of April. And because of this, and my procrastination as well, but mostly because I was extremely busy with actually getting the invitations out. I did not have enough time or energy <laughs> to put this look together far in advance before the memorial. So I was actually working on this dress mostly the day of the memorial. Um, I think I was planning on finishing it up Thursday night and then doing like maybe like buttons and hem on Friday, but I really did not get cracking on this until the day of the memorial, which I took a slick day and didn't go out service that day, although I had planned on it, but I ended up not doing so. And I think it rained um, that day. No, it didn't rain that day. Um, my Metro cart partner <laughs> had to go get the floral arrangements for our congregation that day. So I didn't go out because we didn't get to do the Metro cart. But anyway, if you don't know anything about what I'm talking about, it's not important to the story. Just, just bear with me here. So, um, the construction of the dress and the jacket happened on Friday morning. The memorial was Friday evening at 8 p.m. Um, I was able to get the dress finished at about 3. The dress was finished at 3. The dress was very easy to put together. This is a pattern I definitely recommend. Um... If you want to do a formal dress that is like fully covering you but with a little bit of skin in the back and we'll get to that in a second um but i really really like this dress pattern however um the thing that i messed up on which was a rookie mistake is on one of the side bust pieces in the front i actually on the lining, not on the actual dress, on the lining, I actually turned it the wrong way or I used the wrong, the opposite piece, the piece from over here on this side, this piece from over here on this side, and it jacked up the bust area. So it does not lay and fit like it's supposed to, which that's a problem, especially when you use a serger. So I didn't realize that something was wrong until I had searched all the pieces together except for that last bodice piece, those last two bodice pieces, and I was like, Oh crap, we can't go back and fix this. Because once it cuts off the seam allowance, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and I was attaching it to the lining to the dress. It wasn't like I saw the lining and the lining was messed up. Because I had plenty of the lining, I could have went back and recut that. It wasn't until I attached it to the dress that I was like, well, these pieces aren't meeting up. And because of that, I have got some uh, bunching and puckering here on the side in the bust area, as well as the back does not lay flat against my back, which is why when I turn the dress around to the back, you'll see where I had to do some little 
finagling in order to get to work. But the jacket, I promised myself if I could not get the jacket completely done by 5.30, because that's when I wanted to take my shower, start my makeup, because I wanted to be on time. If I could not get the jacket done by 5.30, I was not going to wear the jacket. I was just going to wear the dress. Well, because the dress didn't fit my back like it was supposed to. It wasn't supposed to be a wide open piece. It was supposed to be a sliver um, of skin showing it through the back of the dress. I had to finish the jacket. So the jacket I did not finish until 7 o'clock. Now that is pulling it really close, okay? The Kingdom Hall that we met at for the memorial is about 10 minutes away. Okay, it usually takes me a full hour, hour and a half to do my makeup, even when it's done simply like it is here today. But I have, I have figured out how to work it down. Like if my eyebrows have already been shaped and arched, I can usually cut my makeup time down in half. That means no eyeshadow, <laughs> no primer, none of that. Um, but anyway, so I worked on the jacket until seven, jumped in the shower, took a five minute shower, did my makeup in 20 minutes. So my mom would pick me up at 7.20. She had to wait until 7.25. We got there, it was 7.35, 7.40ish. So I was on time and that's all that matters, okay? This event was about Jesus, okay? <laughs> it was not about me. But you were not seeing this on Memorial Night, okay? You were seeing this actually a week and two days later because I went back and worked on the dress and the jacket some more. Um, I inserted a little bit more fabric into the lining of the dress so that maybe I could stop all that bunching, couldn't fix it. So I will be more careful next time that I do this um, dress. Cause I am gonna do this dress again. I really, really like it. The jacket, I originally had only two gold buttons on here in the front. I went back and switched it out with three and alternated the buttons. Um, so two are on that side and one button is on this side. Um, the thing that I really, really like about this jacket is that it was so easy to do because I eliminated the collar and the peplum. And with this um, jacket being uh, a basket weave here in the back, um, and I did line the jacket, the jacket is lined fully. I did not have to do any tricky, weird stuff with trying to attach the cuffs lining to the jacket cuff on the um, on the sleeve here. So actually, once I was done with all of the inner workings of the jacket lining and everything, then I was able to sew up the jacket through this part here and completely close it off. So it is completely finished. There are no raw edges. The lining is attached to the jacket fully. I love the way that it turned out. I actually wanted to basket weave this area too because it is a separate um, piece um, from the jacket, but <laughs> should've done this a uh, long time ago since I've had this fabric for over a year. So <laughs> that's why that didn't work out. But it because of the, the dress being so wide open on my back, not the way it was supposed to, I had to wear the jacket because I did not want to wear too much of my skin out because that's inappropriate it's inappropriate now to the memorial i ended up wearing a red camisole turned upside down so the arms of the camisole were down here and then came up past my brazier on the back here um but i'm very pleased with the jacket i bought some more of this basket um fabric so that i can make a um straight sheath dress so I'll have something else to go with this jacket um, I like it because I can it, it's got that natural look to it so I can wear it with lots of other earth tone items that I make which I will be doing lots of earth tone items this year <sighs> the dress was lovely to wear I didn't have to worry about covering up my legs it was long and flowy the basket weave back is um, sewn closed with a gold thread, but I will get a close up on that for you if you have not already seen that in my show of the garment. Um, but yeah, the, this dress is very, very easy to do. I would suggest this pattern for a beginner if you want to do a formal dress um, or you just want to do a dress and you want to have your back out a little bit. 
won't be all covered up, but have something out besides your arms. So it does have an empire waist on it, which I tend to shy away from those. Um, being busty with a thick waist, I tend to stay away from anything that's going to draw more attention to this area here. I did line it with the yellow lining that was left over from my um, fluo orange roll dress. I had some of that left over, which I think I'm going to go get some more because I really, really like the quality of that fabric. And it was at Hobby Lobby. Um, these two buttons up here, I covered metal buttons with the same lining fabric. I think this was supposed to be a hook and eye closure. I do not like hook and eyes. I would rather just do a button and loop, which I did here. And I did have to pin open this back because it was literally just bucking and not anywhere close to my back whatsoever. So I went ahead and tacked these open a little bit more, making kind of like an inverted dart. So it gives it this weird geometric shape instead of being just this much fabric. Um, there was supposed to be a hook and eye here, but it was pulling the fabric and it was not, a, it was not good. So I had to eliminate that hook and eye. Uh, the dress is not fully lined, only the bodice is lined. I did not have enough fabric to do the whole lining of the dress, but because the dress is long and it's got a heavy enough print on it that any amount of sunshine showing on me will not show through the dress. I just left it alone. The dress is completely surged. That was, that was the only downfall. If I had not surged the dress, I could have salvaged what I did wrong with that lining. I, I could have fixed it. But now that it is surged together, uh, I can't go back and fix it. <laughs> All I can do is know better for the future. The hemline is unfinished. I went ahead and overlocked the hem so it's black on the bottom. I did not take it under and stitch it to itself. You'll see. I'll include a picture of that. But overall, I really, really like the dress. I love this print. I have a lot of it left over. So I'm planning on making either some shorts or um, a skirt so I can wear it more often because of course it's going to be too hot for this because this cotton is a one of those premium novelty cottons uh which it, it's a great quality but it's hot underneath the here it was steaming <laughs> with the jacket on too that probably would had something to do with it but it was it was it was hot i am planning on making a yellow uh tube top to go uh with this dress so that it'll cover my bra just to match the lining, give it some continuity. But other than that, the outfit is finished. The memorial was good. Um, I have not finished my story yet. I'm gonna make it quick as possible. So the memorial was awesome. The brother who gave the talk was great. We had a good turnout. I took my mom out to eat. And while my mom and I are sitting there talking, I'm telling her a story. This is how bad this story is, is. I don't even remember what I was talking about. I was just thinking to myself, man, the room feels like it's spinning and I'm getting kind of nauseous. And then as I'm thinking this in my own head, my mother just looks at me with these giant eyes. She goes, I think I'm going to throw up. And my poor mom got sick in the restaurant twice. Um, So it was not like the best night. If I had just taken her to the restaurant that she wanted to go to, I don't, I think it would have been a perfect night, but I took her to a restaurant that was one of my favorite that she had never been to. And it's safe to say I'm never going to go back there again because that was not, that was not a good experience for me. It was not. My mom is okay. She's a trooper. She can deal with that. I cannot. <laughs> I am a, I'm a wuss. But my poor mom got sick at the restaurant twice and um, I didn't get so sick. I, I kind of talked myself off the ledge because I really, really don't like throwing up, guys. Like, that's my number one fear. But anyway, um, yeah, besides that, I, I still feel bad about it. Like, that was over a week ago and I still feel bad about that. Like, I, I feel like I would never make up for that situation. And she's like, Monty, it's not a big deal. And I'm like, it is a big deal. I can't have you getting sick at a restaurant. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. 
but um, next year I'm going to, I'm going to actually make dinner. I'm going to make dinner next year. I'm going to make my dress in advance. I'm going to make dinner. I'm just going to have my family over because I cannot have that situation again. I'm so glad that it was just me and my mom and I didn't have like my grandmother and my aunt and my uncle and his girlfriend because if everybody had gotten sick, I might have a lawsuit on my hands. I'm just saying, I might have to sue somebody. <laughs> anyway, I am sorry that I just said that in this video. I'm just saying, older people getting sick from food poisoning is not your ideal day. Anyway, this is my finished memorial dress. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please go and get this McCall's pattern. This Vogue pattern is a keeper too. I've done this one before. This jacket can be done with so many different variations. It would look great with almost any print or no print at all. Um, it's going to be hard to find because it's out of print. Well, both of them are out of print, but this one is the newer one. And this is definitely one of those jackets I think everybody needs. Um, what, what I like about it is that it stops right here so that if you want to do up your necklaces and, and your decolletage, you can do that and it'll look great. This one is going to look great on anybody, no matter what shape, size, height you are. So I hope you enjoyed this review of my tulips in a basket dress outfit. And I will see you guys for the next review. I hope you enjoyed your memorial season. Here are some pictures of the flowers of my congregation. See you guys.